Hello everyone, it's Danny Wilson from Boxing Science. Welcome to Boxing Science TV, episode 16. This episode is a taster from our Plyometrics for Combat Sports Workshop. The full footage of this is taken from our Ultimate Coaching for Combat Sports Workshop that we just uh, delivered in London. But we've filmed it and all the footage is now available as part of our Black Friday bundle. This is part of a, a fantastic offer where you've got five brilliant products at a price that you decide. So literally, it's pay what you want. It might be three, five, or ten pounds. It's a price that you decide. So the full footage is actually available through that offer. And here's a one minute promo to just show you what else we've got in store. And the link is just in the bio. So now I'm going to introduce the three phases of plyometrics. So you've got eccentric, the amortization, and the third phase being the concentric phase. The first one is eccentric. This is how effectively we control the downward force. So how fast we can decelerate before we reaccelerate into the concentric part. This is good for like deceleration when we're uh, swapping and changing or doing uh, landing mechanics as well. Knee and ankle stiffness are important for effective force absorption and as well strength levels. The stronger that you are, the more effectively you'll be able to control eccentrically. The next phase between the eccentric and the concentric is the amortization phase and this is uh, the time and space between the first and second, uh, sorry, the first and third phase. The quicker the amortization phase is, the less uh, elastic stored energy is lost. So we want to try and minimize this to 200, 250 milliseconds. So any longer than that, we lose that stored energy to help assist force production during the concentric phase. The concentric phase is a shortening of the muscle. The muscle contracts and produces a lot of force in that short amount of time. Like I said, the fa this phase is assisted by a stored elastic potential energy from the stretch shortening cycle. So you're seeing a pattern here. You're seeing that the concentric phase is affected by the amortization phase, but also the eccentric phase can affect the amortization phase. So if this amortization phase isn't optimized to 200, 250 milliseconds or performed as quickly as possible, the amount of force that can be produced in the concentric phase is affected. However, if you're not able to control forces and absorb forces effectively during the eccentric phase, this can have a big effect on the amortization phase. So when developing athletes, being able to absorb force before you can produce force is really important. And it's really important for our athletes here at Boxing Science too. So here's the plyometric journey. You've got land slash jump, jump, and then we've got load. Let's start with here, land slash jump. So we look to develop the landing mechanics as well as explosiveness with appropriate exercises. So first things first, you heard the term 
walk before you can run or crawl before you can walk. In our terms, we want to land before we can jump. So develop them, uh, the eccentric utilisation, develop the ability to absorb and decelerate uh, for high amounts of force before we can transition that into a jump. We need to equal out the, the differences that we're seeing in the counter movement jump and the squat jump. So we look to use like kind of altitude landings and, and different kind of uh, drills that try and improve landing mechanics. But also we're, we're quite mindful that our athletes are wanting to get fast and explosive for the next fight. They're saying down at Boxing Sciences that every fight is a world title fight, whether you're in a European or British title fight, or if you're fighting a journeyman, uh, we want to try and improve our athlete and be the best possible version of them every fight. Because if you lose or you don't have a, a good performance, this can affect your career in the long run. So we want to try and get our athletes in the best possible shape. So we try and adapt our exercises to make sure that we're still improving strength and improving speed. If we're talking about a youth athlete and we've got a long time to work with them, uh, we would just be working on landing mechanics right there. But with our professionals, we look to try and put in some jumping drills in there as well. So in that first, uh, so in that first phase, we will select some exercises that are appropriate that will help improve speed and explosiveness. This can be segmented jumps, so actually doing an altitude landing, holding, and then firing up into a jump. Or we'll do uh, box jumps as well. So the reason why we do box jumps is because when we jump up high, the box is there, and there's actually low eccentric, um, sorry, there's, there's low forces that our athletes have to deal with. So going on to the next phase is the jump phase. And these are body weight exercises that challenge the stretch shortening cycle of the lower body. So these can be just rapid counter movement jumps, repeated counter movement jumps as well. Can be broad jumps, squat jumps. Can be one step counter movement jumps as well. So actually stepping off a box and that's challenging the, um, the stretch shortening cycle even more. And then the last phase is the loading phase. So we'll use loaded jumps, challenging the stretch shortening cycle of, of the lower body. So we'll use either like a dumbbell counter movement jump, we'll do accentuated uh, counter movement jumps as well, where we drop the weight as we go down. And then we've got as traditional trap bar, uh, sorry, we've got our trap bar jumps. And we've also got our loaded counter movement jumps using a barbell. So that's the plyometric journey. And a lot of people asking me uh, on the course is how long would you spend on each phase? If I was to tell you now, um, I'd be choosing 10 week phase on that, 10 week phase on jumping, and then cycle like pro different progressions of the jump for around about a year, and then look to do some loaded uh, plyometric work. But what I'd like to point out is, is that it all depends on the athlete that's in front of you. You know, it's not a one size fits all approach. Different athletes at our gym are either uh, got fast switch muscle fibers, some are endurance athletes that'll struggle to perform these actions. So we treat each athlete individually and just use our coaching experience to help progress them on. So if you've got an athlete, start them off with this land and jump phase for 10 weeks and then see where they're at and keep revisiting some landing mechanics as well. You know, with our athletes that have been in for a few years, we still do altitude jumps today. So that's the plyometric journey. In this next clip, we're going to be looking at the landing and jumping phase, the two exercises that we use in our first 10 week program. That's altitude landings and box jump. This footage is taken from our full plyometric for boxing workshop that is part of our Black Friday bundle. So we normally do our plyometric work uh, as part of our extended warm-up. So after they go through their uh, eagles, glute bridges, side clams, everything like that, 
after they do the squats and the lunges, they'll move on to like one plyometric move uh, and a punch specific movement. So a landmine punch, med ball punch, something like that. And they pair that up as a superset. In session one, we'll do altitude landings. In session two, we'll do box jumps. Today we're gonna do both as part of one exercise. So just quickly, is that before you do a boxing session or just a normal strength and conditioning session? A normal strength and conditioning session, yeah. So before they move on to the key exercise. So I'll show you altitude landing first. So you're going to step onto a box. Uh, how high? It just, dep it just depends. Right? You'd, you'd start them off pretty low, probably a 30 centimetre box, and then you'd start trying to put put them a little bit higher. So altitude landing, we're basically stepping off the box and we're landing into the power position. And hold in there. So the power position is where you're sitting into that quarter squat. We'll get, get it a go now. All right, so feet hip width apart, sit into that quarter squat position and popping them hips back. You want to be on like balls of your feet and like a little bit of tension through the heels, but like, like you can get like, a sl uh, like an A4 piece of paper just underneath it, okay? And so up, then power position, and up, okay. So basically what we're doing is trying to get in that power position as quickly as we can. And the quicker that we do it, the better that we're absorbing that force. So I see a lot of coaches like saying, land as softly as you can. If you land as soft as you can, I'm getting into a deeper position. It's taking me longer to absorb that force. So as long as it's not uh, on the floor, you know, we want in to absorb that force as quick as we can. We've got to make some sort of noise. So, and step on. The, I'll show you some of the mistakes. Going too low. Trying to be too solid straight away. Quite need dominant. Too upright as well. Lean forward. Use your hips. Sit into that power position. If an athlete can't do that and they can't even do it from the 30 centimetre box, they've got to be an issue. All right, but. A good regression is to do it from a, from a standing position, going from tiptoes into that power position. Okay, so if I just want you to get onto your feet, get up onto your toes, arms up, and then land. Good stuff. Arms up, and land. Good. Two more times. Up. Getting into that position. Good. Good power position. One more. Great stuff. That's great if you're working with youth athletes, if you haven't got access to, to a box or a step or whatever, just go and put onto your toes and drop him. Also, you can just do like little jumps, either forward, a little bit further forward, or try and get a little bit vertical, okay? And landing into that. So we've got altitude landings. In session two, we'll do box jumps. I'll show you a quick demonstration. Okay, so you've seen box jumps time and time again, whether it's in your own gym, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. A lot of mistakes are being made with box jumps. The biggest one is trying to get the box as high as it can. This is just basically for ego and a little bit of a challenge. Because the higher the box goes, the less that kind of movement uh, that basically reduces the quality of the movement. The aim of the box jump is to improve triple extension of the hips, knees, and ankles. Wanting to get the hip extension to transfer into your punch. The higher the box goes, what happens is that ends up being knee up. So I've seen like athletes like get on boxes like 
about this high. And what they'll do, they'll do anything to get onto that box. The main thing that they'll do is as soon as they start jumping, they're tucking the hip, the hip straight away. So if that's not that athletic movement, we're not working that hip extension that we can. So I much prefer a lower box, but an optimal movement, getting them hips firing, extending, and then landing on the box. Another thing is that, well, I repeated quite a lot yesterday, our athletes will compensate to try and make the exercise as easy as they can every time. They're used to bouncing off their feet, so what they'll want to do is have a little drive off straight away, use that short stretch, shortening cycle. So they'll either they'll leave the floor and then bounce up. It's not training what we need to train. We're training the short stretch shortening cycle when we're doing our pogos. To do it there, we're not optimizing anything. We optimize short stretch shortening cycle and then specific exercises, the pogos, high pogos, something that we're going to touch on in a bit. We're not training that when we're doing the box jumps. What we're doing when during the box jumps is training long stretch shortening cycle, trying to get that, get into that power position and drive up from there. Another thing, uh, when you see that tap more, is where they have a walk into it and then drive up. Okay, so what I want you to do is to box jump, then on the other side, that's your landing. Let's, work, let's get the boxes out. Not too many boxes, let's have like four people to box, five people to box and work through that. Great work. Good, nice solid landings, get your hips back. A little bit softer landing on the box jumps, yeah? Yeah, good. Solid. Just get a little bit deeper, Francesca, yeah? Hope we enjoyed them two exercise demonstrations. Like I said before, this is part of the Black Friday bundle, and this is available for anyone. Pay what you want. You can have it for free, five or ten pounds. The link is in the bio uh, below this video, where you can get access to all the other exercises and more information about our uh, philosophies about plyometric training for combat sports. There's over 30 demonstrations and these can be done anywhere because it requires very minimal uh, equipment and very minimal space as well. So it can actually be done in your boxing gym. So like I said, the link is in the description below. Click on that, pay what you want, Black Friday offer and it ends this Friday. Cheers guys, but thanks for watching another episode of Boxing Science TV. Be here again next week for another episode, so make sure you subscribe to this channel too. Cheers guys, see you soon.